What is up, guys? Random here. Alright, guys. Creeps, Creeps Make Pasta just uploaded a new video called The Quiet Kid Creepy Pasta. I just wanted to check this out. I'm a fan of creepy pastas. Um, so, anyways, guys, I'll have the link to the original video down below, guys. Let's go ahead and check this out. Hold the volume. Give me a second, guys. All right. Let's go check this out. When I was in school growing up, I always sat next to the quiet kid, Andy. It just happened that his last name was Winfrey, and my last name was Zemba, so we always sat next to each other. This worked out pretty well, because Ma always said I could talk to a brick wall, and Andy was the human equivalent of talking to a brick wall. Andy wasn't your typical quiet kid. In fact, he never talked at all. Ever. I'm pretty sure that he could talk, but he just chose not to. If you tried to talk to him, he would just stare blankly at you until you That's went away. Creepy. If the teachers called on him to read, as every teacher tried, kind of he would just ignore their request and go about doing his own thing. Ignored the teacher, Eventually, just, like, everyone just accepted that nothing. he didn't talk. That was just Andy. At first, people thought there was something wrong with Andy. They suspected that maybe he was deaf and mute. That would explain why he couldn't talk. But he could hear you just fine, and he never even tried to communicate using sign language or even writing down what he wanted, when he clearly could write. It was a decision Andy had made not to talk. Andy was smart. Maybe just shy, probably. He was Maybe easily the smartest kid in our grade. I don't know. Probably the entire school. Most people are surprised when they find this out because if you ever have been in the same class as Andy, you know he never paid any lick of attention to anything the teachers was trying to teach. Because of this, the other kids, and even adults, nicknamed him Rain Man. You know, Rain after Man. the movie. I always thought that was pretty mean, even if it was somewhat fitting. In elementary school, he would sit at his desk and draw pictures or read all day long, ignoring everyone. But I don't think he ever missed a question on any test. The hmm. teacher could call him up to the board to answer any question and it was always correct. Some teachers even made a game of trying to stump him, but he won every time. Wow. It didn't change in middle school. He would sit and listen to a portable CD player every day during class and pass every class with straight A's. Damn, Sometimes I wondered that, why he even showed up at is. school to yeah. begin with since he was so much smarter than everyone else. I don't know if I would call Andy my friend growing up, but I think Andy saw me as his friend. Not the same type of friend you and I may be, but the sort of friend Andy would have. I mean, we sat by each other because of our last names and I would talk to him about the X-Men since he wore some of their shirts from time to time. X oh yeah, the X -Men. Andy would sit at our lunch table and listen to me and my friends talk about girls or the new superheroes movie. He would sometimes smile and nod, and sometimes we would trade CDs for a few days. It always made me laugh that a guy who never made a sound was into heavy metal. I guess in a weird way, Andy and I were friends. That's, that's, that's kind of interesting. Andy also had a secret ability. I am pretty sure I am the only one who ever caught him, and I never told anybody. Caught him. Doing what? Andy had the power to move things with his mind. What he was usually hell? cautious enough to keep his talent hidden, but sometimes he got careless. Move stuff with his mind? What the hell? Is he like a mind reader or something like that? Like... Jeez, that's like, that's weird. That's, that's crazy, jeez. Oh, bored. I'll never forget the first time I caught him. I was in fourth grade, sitting next to him in the back of the class. As usual, he was not paying attention and doing his own thing. In the corner of my eye, I saw his pencil spinning in a circle on his desk. The hell? I moved my eyes over 
without actually turning my head, and I could see him twirling his fingers about three inches above his pencil, and the pencil followed his finger's motion. The hell? Oh my God. Then he stopped his finger and started twirling it the other way, and the pencil followed. Whoa. Another time, he was reading a book during class, and I would see the pages turn without him actually having to turn it. At wow. first, I thought maybe it was the wind, but it happened enough times, I could tell it was Andy. Like he eventually noticed that I'd caught him. Like he hell? looked surprised at first, but then gave me a little smile and held his finger to his mouth as to say, don't tell my secret. And I never did. Wow. Once I knew he had this ability, I was able to notice it from time to time. Andy went out of his way to make sure he hid this talent and rarely used it around people. But if someone upset him, he would lose control. Even on those occasions oh, when he was upset, he was still very good with disguising it to look like a random accident. It always made me wonder just exactly what Andy was capable of if he lost control. For instance, oh, in fifth grade, we were out playing football at recess. Even though Andy didn't talk, he loved to play sports and loved recess. You'd never expect him, of all people, to be so competitive. The other team kept cheating by continuing to play after they were downed by Andy, but since Andy didn't talk or argue, they got away with it. It happened over and over, and Andy was mad. When we got the ball oh, back, shit. Andy, who was playing quarterback, he would clap to have the ball hiked. He could communicate when he wanted to. And threw what should have been an easy interception right to the boy who had been cheating. Somehow, the boy's hands didn't close, and the ball drilled him right in the face, breaking his nose. Oh, damn. As the kid sat on the ground, crying in a pool of his own blood, Andy nose. looked shit. over to me and gave me a wink. Another time, we had a substitute teacher for a few weeks while ours was out on maternity leave in middle school. This teacher hated teacher our class, like and especially yeah. hated Andy. She didn't like that he was allowed to just sit in the back and listen to music while she was teaching. She had never seen any student so disrespectful and allowed to get away with it. She took his CD player away. Probably shouldn't have done that. The next Probably day should. after lunch, the teacher returned Jesus. with a fresh afternoon coffee. As she went to take a drink, she accidentally misjudged and poured the entire cup of steaming hot coffee all over her chest and stomach. She screamed in pain and had to get taken to the hospital and treated for second degree burns. Oh, damn. She never returned to class again. Andy had his CD player back the next day, and everything so was burned, back to normal. The teacher, the teacher to to the hospital. This oh brings us to high school. Damn. As you might expect, Andy had a reputation. Everyone knows about Andy. I think the whole town probably knew about Andy. Wow. When you are different in high school, you attract attention. A lot of times, that attention is unwanted attention. Even though Andy never said or did anything to anybody, he still became a target. Some of the upperclassmen decided to make a game to see who could make Andy talk first. The person who could make him say even one word would get a hundred dollars. They tried everything they could think of. They tried being his friend, telling him jokes. Girls even offered to date him and even sleep with him if he would just say yes. But he never said a word. As time went on, their tactics changed. Instead of taking a friendly approach, they decided they would take the opposite approach and pick on him relentlessly to make him crack. Having a locker next to him, I witnessed a lot of the abuse he went through. Kids were abu and were abusing him. it was what abuse. The they tried everything from calling him names, pushing him into That's lockers, right. trying to embarrass him, and just 
bullying him in every way they could think of. Just you get the, the picture. That's not right. oh my God. Still, Andy never broke. Up a bit. He never said a word. He would get visibly upset, red-faced, deep breathing, but he never said a word. It got so bad at times that I tried to step in for him and talk for him, but that just made them start to bully us both. One Friday, oh, things went too far. Three of the worst offenders pushed him into his locker again. Oh, God. Andy finally had enough and pushed them back. The fight started. It was three on one. Three juniors football players versus the freshman Andy. Why would they do that? That's Andy that's wasn't up. even big for his age, and he never stood a chance. There wasn't much Andy could do, except try to shield himself from being repeatedly kicked in the head while he was down. It didn't last long before he got broken up, but Andy was hurt. His nose looked broken, and his face was a crimson mask. To his credit, even when the police came and asked for a statement to arrest those kids, he didn't talk. The three juniors were arrested for assault, and suspended yeah, for a good. week. The cameras had caught everything they needed to press charges, and there were enough witnesses even without Andy giving a statement. When we came back from school the following Monday, they made everyone report to their homeroom before school started. This was not normal, but occasionally it would happen. So I took my seat in the back next to Andy. Then. They made the morning announcements. On Saturday night, three students had tragically died in separate house fires over the weekend. The hell? Counselors would be available all week Freaking for anybody who needed to see them. In the fire. It was oh the same God. three boys who had attacked Andy that died in the house fires. All right, I wouldn't say they deserve to like die or not, but they should definitely be, they should definitely go to jail. But the kids freaking died. The kids that were like bullying him and like abusing him and stuff like that. They like, they freaking died in a fire. I leaned over to Andy and said, I guess they won't be bothering you anymore. Well, I guess not. He glanced back at me, still smiling and in a low, deep voice. So quiet that I was the only one who could just about hear it. He said, I know. There was an investigation and all three fires were caused by an electrical fire that had started in the boys' room. Wow. All three of the boys were found to be burned alive trying to escape out of their bedroom door which were found to not have been locked but still had to be broken open by the firefighters unseen. It was wow. just an eerie coincidence that the fires all happened on the same night at the same time and killed three boys who were in the, the same, same time, grade. Like, the same time, the same Two weeks later, Jeez. Andy's parents pulled him from school, and the teacher said his family were moving due to a new job. Yeah, I've tried to find probably, him on social media, move. but I'm not surprised the boy who never talked doesn't have a Facebook account. In the entire time I knew him, those were the only words I ever heard him speak. Well, guys, that was The Quiet Kid Creepy Pasta by Creeps McPasta. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it. If, uh, if you're new, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.